Miller. In a moment of grief and silence, I stand dumbfounded in my inner being, unable to understand this life's turmoil. I am lost in the labyrinths of my mind while thinking about the perplexed people of a politically polluted land, the Indian occupied Kashmir. People of a land where subjugation and forced order is in play. People of a land where the travesty of justice has scaled up the heights. People who transform from kings to materials and objects and are now subjected to the heinous crimes of a totalitarian state, India. People who are the products of genocide and slavery. People who are uncertain of who they truly are. May Lord, people of a land where sons supporting freedom's fight, fathers seem lost, mothers looking tirelessly over the sunset for their long lost sons. Wives lamenting the deaths of their husbands day and night. The scenery there is beautiful, but the soil there is stained in blood. My Lord, while I have painted this very gloomy but true picture, of the downtrodden people of Kashmir. Let me take this opportunity to ask the international community, is your heart not clenching at the pain of watching? Is your heart not clenching at all those atrocities being committed by a world's so-called largest democracy? Is your heart not clenching at the thought of all those innocent peoples dying for the, for the sake of their, their right to self-determination? Is your heart not clenching at watching a paradise cry? Is your heart not clenching at watching a paradise cry? My Lord, over the course of the last 70 years, over 25 UN resolutions adopted to Kashmir, but all ended in smoke. Three full-scale fights between India and Pakistan fought, but all fell flat. Almost 100,000 lives lost, but the shelling and the stone pelting still carries on. The hue and cry made by the Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch still continues to fall on the deaf ears of international community and all in vain. My Lord, let me ask again, oh, those who are at the helm of international affairs, if you can help Savoko get rid of the manacles of Serbian slavery, if you can play an effective role in Iraqi Kurdistan, if you can mitigate the pain of the people of East Timur, if you can play an effective role, and if you can lambast Russia for the human rights violation in Crimea, why don't you pay heed towards the plight of the Kashmiri people? Don't you realize that Kashmir is a smoldering volcano? The day it erupted in the form of a nuclear exchange between Pakistan and India, it could take two million lives easy, hundred million lives thereafter, and separate the clouds of radioactive dust around the globe. Don't you realize that the Burhanwani's body 
Rap in Pakistani play is a testament to the Kashmiri people's willingness to join Pakistan. So please, so please feel the way, feel the pain, hear the refrain, and ask India to roll back both its draconian laws and its troops from the side of Kashmir and conduct a free and fair plebiscite. Because this is the need of the hour. Otherwise, Arundhati Roy's this court will keep haunting us all. When we wake up in Kashmir and say good morning, what we really mean is good morning. My Lord, let me finish with these lines. Someone speak to God, someone turn the moon on. Our Kashmir is in Muharram and we have to call it an E. Our Kashmir is in Muharram and we have to call it an E. Thanks.